the Rocky Mountains of Alberta, a cold place to be in the winter. Snow covers everything, freezes lake water, chills our breath into cloud. Amidst the sub-zero temperatures hides a tranquility not seen to many. To brave the cold and head into the backcountry requires a special type of dexterity. But for some people choosing to come out here alone is not only a way to experience a different landscape, but to recharge and reflect inward about what their life is. My name is Sean Norris, and I live in Calgary, Alberta. I'm someone that enjoys spending time by myself. My need to get away from it all has always been important to me, which is the driving reason behind wanting to have a winter backcountry experience. The solitude of the cold mountains is something I've always wanted to experience. I pack up my gear and begin the drive to Kananaskis, where I'll camp the Jewel Bay Backcountry Campground for a night. I head west of Calgary on the number one highway, then south on Highway 40 towards Barrier Lake. My hike starts at the Barrier Lake Dam and is roughly 3.9 kilometers long. I've made it through the first section of this hike. It was completely open, which was kind of unfortunate because there's gale force winds happening right now due to the recent Chinooks in Alberta. But I'm heading into the trees now. I can already tell the wind has tapered off quite a bit. So I've stopped for another break now, my second break out here, mainly because I'm starting to sweat. Carrying all the gear on my back is making my back sweat a bit. And when you're out here in the winter, if you're hiking or camping, you don't want to sweat. That's one of the biggest things I remember learning from Les Stroud, Survivor Man, the TV show when I was growing up, is you sweat, you die. So that's what I'm trying to do, is trying to shed my jacket, kind of let the wind cool me off so I don't overheat and possibly get hypothermia from being soaking wet. All right, I'm starting to feel like I'm getting closer now. The Jewel Bay is kind of right at the bottom of this pass right there. That's the Jewel Pass as well. I'm getting pretty close to that. I think I must be, I'm more than halfway now. So, uh, gotta keep on hiking. Hopefully I get there soon. I've hit another sign marker now the second intersection of trails that are out here, which means that I'm two-thirds of the way there. So I'm more than half, and this next part is probably one of the easier parts because it's pretty flat. Heck, this whole hike is pretty flat to begin with. But this next part should be pretty easy, and then at the campground where hopefully it's sheltered from the wind. It's kind of got a big hill on one side of it, and I'm hoping that it's gonna be sheltered from the wind because if it's not, <sighs> It's going to be pretty hard to set up my tent. It's really windy right here. As you can tell by my hair, I can barely even keep my eyes open. The last third of the hike is also pretty flat, with some short sections of uphill. Now you can't really see it, but I parked right about there. About three kilometers back that way. I'm almost at Jewel Bay Backcountry Campground now. I'm gonna have a hard push here to the end. Once I see the bridge going over the dried up Jewel Creek, I know the campground is only 100 meters away.
I've made it to the Jewel Bay Backcountry Campground. Just looking around here, there's actually, I found some wood in the bear bins, which I'm really happy about. I'll be able to have a fire when it gets a little colder out tonight. Most of the campsites have snow on their tent pads, which is a little unfortunate because I'm guessing it'll be a little wet underneath. So I'll have to clear one off before I can set up my tent, which is not really a problem. I'm just taking a rest right now. I kind of pushed myself, myself through the last part of the hike so I could get here. It took me about two hours, two hours, 15 minutes to get here. I left Calgary at about two, or sorry, I left Calgary at about 10.15, started the hike around 11.15, and got here at about 1.30ish, 1.30ish, 1.40ish. So about 2.15, two hours, 15 minutes. This isn't a super bad time, I think, for carrying about 30, 40 pounds of camping gear. I scraped the snow and ice off my tent pad and begin setting up my tent. Once finished, I roll out my sleeping mat and sleeping bag while also organizing some stuff for my pack. So luckily, someone left behind some dry firewood in the bear bin right beside me. So my feet are a little wet actually from hiking through the mud and the wet snow because it is pretty warm out right now. So I'm gonna try and dry my feet off because they're pretty wet and it's not good to keep them wet. My boots are pretty wet too, so I should try and dry them off as well. I have no problem starting a fire, luckily. After drying my feet, I grab some clean snow to boil up in my pot. I've got some snow in my container. Starting to get a little hungry, hiking uh, made me a little hungry, setting up all the tan, doing all that physical activities made me pretty hungry. So I'm going to use my E-Tech City mini camping stove. This is kind of the first time I've actually got to test it in the field. It's a little windy today so I hope it doesn't affect it too much. And the camera just about fell over because it's so windy. Jeez. <laughs> well, I got lightning reflexes. Oh boy. That was kind of crazy. All right. I'm not sure if I should leave the camera there or not anymore. Okay. Stuff out of the way just in case I sprout up a huge flame here. There we go. There we go. Beef vegetable soup is ready. It's pretty good. I think it cooked pretty well over the Tech Mini Camp Stove. I was, uh, I think it took a little longer than probably normal because there's a bit of wind out here and I haven't got a kind of a windshield for it yet. That's kind of my next purchase for uh, backcountry gear. It's hot. Youch. <laughs> Really hot, which is good so far.
I have finished my supper. The beef vegetable soup was great. That's the first time I've actually cooked something using my mini camping stove and the pot that I was using as well. So it was kind of nice to do that. So far, my highlights of the day are like getting out here, getting to the campground. It was a great, it was a great hike. I didn't know how tough it was going to be because I've never hiked in the winter before, and this is a longer distance than say to point backcountry campground where that's only about three kilometers and this was about four but i think i handled it pretty well it's mostly flat minimal elevation gain so that's always a good thing when you're hiking so another highlight was getting to the campground setting up my tent noticing that there's no one else here i'm completely alone here as well and to me that's part of the reason why I came out here. I wanted to have some alone time. I usually do videos with either my friend Jesse or my wife Kelsey. You know, I thought I'd change it up a little bit. I'm an, actually an introverted kind of person, so I like to have my time to myself to recharge and that sort of thing. So coming out here and then just being alone and the only thing I can hear are my thoughts and this wind. This is, the wind has been pretty... Uh, pretty torrential so far quite a force thinking about it being alone out here this is where I like to be it's a place that when I start to panic in my mind or something I feel like has gone wrong in my life or whatever it is I just close my eyes and I picture Kananaskis it could be here it could be at the Upper Kananaskis Lake at Point. I love camping there too. It could be Troll Falls, another hike that I like to do out here. I've done it a few times. I just love being out here. And whether it's alone or with people, today it's alone because I really needed to get out of the city. Just be with nature, kind of, you know. I'd show you some of the food that I brought out here. Like I said before, I already cooked up my beef vegetable soup. I've got another one out here as well. I also got some chicken noodle soup. A couple packets left. It's easy to cook in my pot with the mini camping stove. Got some chili, homemade chili that I made a couple days ago, or I should say my wife made. She makes it really good. So. I had to bring some of that out here, probably have that in the morning. I got some salted sunflower seeds. Just picked them up uh, from a bulk bin at a grocery store. Also got snack. Sour jujubes. They're one of my favorite candies. And I, I just had to bring them out here with me. So, that's all the food. I had blueberries as well. But I ate them kind of while I was still hiking. So those are gone. They were good though. It's like all this food. I know I'm definitely probably not going to eat all of it while I'm out here, but I planned just in case something were to happen to me out here. I'm good for at least a couple days. So the sun's pretty much gone down. There's only really like maybe a half an hour where it's still little, a little bit of light out still. And I'm noticing it's starting to slightly rain now, which is really not good. Like I've been able to see uh, some cloud coming in up Jewel Pass beside me. And the clouds kind of surrounding the mountains up there. And I'm just feeling a little bit of sprinkles right now, just a little bit. It's not supposed to drop below freezing tonight. So I'm not going to get any snow, but I'd rather, I don't, I feel like I'd rather almost have snow than rain because at least with snow it's dry, so it's not going to soak my tent. My tent does have a wind, uh, windproof, uh, it has a rainproof tarp over top of it, but I'd rather not get it wet if I don't have to, you know what I mean? As the sun sets, I head into my tent for the night.
So it got pretty dark out. Luckily the clouds kind of moved on from spitting to just kind of stopped after that luckily. I'm in my tent now. Kind of huddled up for the night. I'm pretty tired. Although I say night, but the time isn't night at all. It's 5.46 in the afternoon right now, but the sun went down and I'm tired so I don't really know what else to do at this point because it is winter and the sun sets a lot sooner than in the summer in the spring so but I'm thinking I'm gonna get up I'm gonna set an alarm on my phone I'm gonna get up around 7 a.m. that way I'll probably at least get hopefully eight hours of sleep throughout the night I know going if I'm going to bed within the next 20 minutes or so uh, I know that's more than eight hours till uh, 7 in the morning but I am not sure how I'm going to sleep tonight. I've got a new sleeping bag. It's rated for minus 7 weather. It's not supposed to get below freezing. It's supposed to be about plus 1, plus 2 through the overnight. But I'm a little nervous about getting waking up freezing. The recommendations on the sleeping bag are actually to pretty much sleep in as little as possible. So I'm just going to sleep in my, my thermal undershirt that I've got on and my long johns. And uh, the sleeping bag is supposed to reflect your heat back, so I guess we'll see if it works too. Uh, but I am worried about getting cold tonight. I think that's an understandable worry. Most people, when I told them I was coming out backcountry camping in the winter by myself, they said, "Aren't you going to get cold?" When it, oh, my mother got pretty excited when I told her she said that sounds so cool it's supposed to be nice weather nice ish it was very windy today like I've probably said about three or four times already in this video but she said oh it's gonna be so nice out like what do you have to worry about like you know and I said to her well one thing I have to worry about is dying of hypothermia so there's that I guess I might as well try and get some sleep now hopefully about 8 a.m. I'm actually not super cold. I'm a little cold because it's winter. But I slept decently throughout the night. I kept waking up probably every couple hours because I was a little uncomfortable. But other than that, it wasn't a bad sleep. I actually woke up uh, around, I think it was about two in the morning. For about, I was up for probably about an hour, hour and a half because there was coyotes that were yelping down the lake closer to where I parked I think and they were yelping and they were so loud that it was hard to hard to fall back asleep especially um, when I was a kid I had an irrational irrational fear of wolves and stuff so listening to them while I'm out here alone was a little freaky but they stopped and actually the wind died off during the night I noticed too so that was a plus as well so it's about 8 a.m. right now uh, now I've woken up the sun should be coming up pretty soon although I probably won't see it come up because there's a lot of clouds right now but I should get a fire started right now just to warm up just a little bit more so before I went to bed last night I didn't show it, but I boiled some water. I just boiled it once I had a, had a rolling rolling boil for more than a minute. I just uh, turned off the mini camp stove and then just let it be and left it overnight. Now I've got cold drinking water, so I'm going to fill up my water bottle with it now. This will sure be nice to have when I'm heading back. I'm starting to hike back. Full bottle now. From, and I still got some in here too. Full water bottle. That's really great. My breakfast is ready. Chicken noodle soup. I guess let's see how it tastes. It's pretty good. Nice and hot too.
I start tearing my tent down and gather up my gear to leave. Now that I've eaten all my food, packed away all my stuff, and extinguished my fire properly, I'm about to head back now to the parking lot. And I happen to have fabulous hair right now because I was wearing my toque for most of this morning. So, let's go. My goal heading back is to make it to my car in under two hours. While hiking back, I noticed my boot prints in the frozen mud from yesterday's hike. Well, I've made it back to my car. It only took me about an hour and 45 minutes. I'm happy with that because when I hiked to the backcountry campground yesterday, it took me about two, two and a half hours to get there. It's been an incredible experience coming out here and camping in the winter so hopefully you've enjoyed watching my first time ever backcountry camping in the winter. When you're out here in the winter, if you're hiking or camping, this audio is going to be complete crap because it's windy. That's what I should have done before. Like, why isn't the why isn't this fitting? Because I didn't flip these little uh, holder things up. So let's start this thing up again. Don't worry, I have to come back to the camera. <laughs> 